morning or good afternoon wherever you are in this beautiful globe and welcome to the daily dragonfly so today i just want to go over some of the things we did in yesterday's dragonfly i know we used some shiny bits so this is how the um, actual watercolor dried which i think is really pretty so you can see it does add a really beautiful iridescence to the dragonflies so what i love about doing all these watery dragonflies and letting them dry is then you can start adding your lines so what I wanted to do is show you another one we did the other day and she actually came out really cool because I saw a kind of a dragonfly, you know, fairy in there. So this, her whole body started to look like a little figurine. So what I did was I went ahead, I added some lines in here. You can vaguely see where I wrote the daily dragonfly in there. So I'm going to go ahead um, and redo some of these lines I had already done in the previous video, but I wanted to show you then how you can paint on that beautiful iridescence. Um, as you can see, it shows up differently in the light. And then I'm going to bring back some of this line work and just add more definition to her. So today we're gonna to be working on lines and just kind of adding some fun to our beautiful dragonfly fairy. So please remember when you're drawing and creating, imagination is key. And um, so I like to bring in that back into my work. So I've got the purple Micron pen, and this is so, so, um, I don't know, it just really, when you do this, you can see how it'll start to stand out when I bring that line back. And since I am a lefty, I'm going to have to shift my paper quite a bit. So I'm gonna move some things around here. Trying to make sure it's in range here of the camera. There we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of reestablish those center lines there. Just following my work. Don't get too worried about how things look. Just gently go. And I kind of went on the inside line there, so that's just fine. We're going to bring that back. I go up around here to the outside line. Okay, and just by redoing that line work, it's really easy, it goes over anything, works great over all of the um, types of watercolor I've used, the pearlescent and the regular watercolors. And the one thing about line work is the faster you move your hand, the better it goes. If you go slower, you tend to get more erratic line work. Um, it just gets shakier, right? So I like to move quickly and I know that can be a little intimidating to some who are a little less, haven't practiced as much, but all it is is practice, you know? So I did them first in pink, but I'm kind of digging this purple and I'm just following those lines through. And I purposely didn't add the opalescent paint on all parts of the wing, just so it had some shiny and some dull spots, which I think is quite pretty. I'm gonna add my spiral back in here. So just go ahead and make sure when you're creating that you're just having fun. Don't worry about, you know, perfection. Like I said, none of this is perfection. It's just all having a good time and kind of adding that meditative quality of drawing the lines. I don't know if any of you have done mandalas, but it's very much, it has that same feel. It just really gets you into flow and calms you down. I'll create another dragonfly here in watercolor pretty quick, but I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'll finish it up later. But I just wanted to show you how just by bringing those little lines back, you can create such definition, right? You can see her arms. Let me bring her little chin back in here. Um, 
add some spirals back into her hair. These were the big eyes of the dragonfly, but I don't know. She just all of a sudden appeared to me like a little dragonfly fairy. So that's always fun to do. Let me get the pink one out again. Just bring back some of these spirals I had in there. They add so much, so I'm just painting, you know, so that's like two layers of watercolor paint. The first, it was just the plane that we'd done before in a previous video, and then I added the um, Fine Tech Pearlescence uh, pans right over the top. So there we go. We're just going to, those are, you can see those. I'm going to rewrite the Daily Dragonfly only this time. I think I'm going to do it in purple so you can see a little better. And there we have it. So I'll post this um, when I'm finished as well. I'll post some paintings of it. But what's fun is you can see all the line work and all the pearlescence. And I added the sun back there. I thought that was quite pretty. Um, yeah, so just having fun playing. That's what this is all about. All right, so let's get to this. Let's bring in our pad. And let me center that under the camera and let's just get started with a little dragonfly. And we're just gonna do some bold swoops. And we're going to use the sparkles just because that's what I've been using today. So let's just see, let's use, ooh, let's do purple, right? Okay, so I'm just going to, what I like is when you do your watercolor one, then you can let it dry overnight, and the next day you're ready to do some line work if you don't have time to pull out your paints, and you just want to do a pretty little dragonfly. So we're going to do an easy way to do the wings here. We're going to do it this way, and we're going to go right up to it like a cross, and then I'm going to go one down like this, and one up like that. So that's even an easier way to do the wings if you are having difficulty or just want to try something new. So this is that iridescent type, and I'm just adding a little more depth to it there. I'll add some more color in a minute. I'm going to let that dry. That purple dry is really kind of dusky and has a gray to it, so that's kind of pretty as well. But I think I want something a little more vibrant, so let's try, I don't know, Let's go into, should we go into this pink? Do the body in the pink and see how, you know, it's all experimenting. And that's what I love about dragonflies. The symbols of dragonflies, you know, symbolically their agility and speed and each one of their wings moves independently of each other. So you can change direction and pivot and pivot your actions, pivot your mindset. So we're gonna go ahead and put that big thumb right here. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty, it's weeping into there. And we're just gonna pull up gently like that and make the body. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple little dots here to represent the eyes. There we go. I'm gonna pull that down. So some of that pink went further down in the other. So I'm just gonna pull that up through and see how this one turns out. I'm going to make these a little bigger because I can. There we go. And we know that the bottom dragonfly wing tends to be a little larger than the top. So we're just going to add that in now. There we go. Bring it up. And like I said, if you'd like to see me paint something else besides a dragonfly, just let me know. Now, as you can see, these opalescent colors tend to be less vibrant than your regulars and this is the first time I've just painted solely with them so I'm kind of digging what's happening here it's kind of cool um, so you can see some of that pink and that purple went in there but it's real dusky and really kind of pretty so keep that in mind when you're painting solely with uh, if you're using opalescence this particular brand and I can't speak for all of them but that particular brand happens to really just Kind of get kind of dusky, so we're gonna try. There isn't really a green here, so we're gonna see what this is. This is kind of a olivey color. Got a little bit of red in there, I can see. 
So it's got some different types of opalescent pigments. I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's why we're playing. Okay, so let's just see if we were to draw. Oh, look at that. It turned out oddly, much the same color as mixing the purple and the magenta. That's interesting. So not what I expected there at all, which is kind of fun. So that I know is more of a brown. Okay, let's see here. Let's pull some of this aqua in. See if I do that with the brown, get kind of a little, I'm looking for sort of a leaf color, but these really don't have it. So I'm going to just go ahead and let that stay the way it is. And I'll probably paint over it with some of the more traditional watercolors to get some of that bright vibrancy. But I do like what's happening here. And I'm gonna add a little gold. Oh, I'll get some orange. Let's try orange. I think this is gonna end up being more like a copper color. But let's just see, let's go in here, do these tips. Always like to add a little harmony, go back in. Okay, I think I'm just gonna let that one dry because I found it really interesting that these colors don't look as bright on their own, which is absolutely fine. It's just something that you learn as you use different types of, you know, different types of mediums and different types of paints to see what you like. So for me, I'm going to like these mostly. We're going to paint over this and see how that works later after this dries. Um, but for me, mostly, I think this will be something I'll use as a highlight, right? So something that when it comes in like this, I can use it more as a topical over my brighter traditional colors. All right. Well, I hope you have a fabulous day. This is the end of today's Daily Dragonfly, and you have a wonderful day, and I will see you at the canvas.